Aaron Barish, your reigning SCG Tour Invitational Champion at SCG Con Summer earlier this year, going up against Tan and Grace. It's in fact, it's Model Green Tron. And we will be underway here in just a moment as a show of sportsmanship, a nice fist bump. And here yes. we go. For Barrett, no one drop, no noble hierarch, no uh, no glistener elf. So he'll just sacrifice that wooded foothills and get himself a breeding pool. For Tan and Grace, it's Nurse's power plant and a chromatic star. We'll be going back over to Barrett here in just a moment. It'll be a forest. And there is a blight age. This game could be over next turn, folks. Now, if you're Tan and Grace, you're going to start by sacking a star. Really needs to find himself a copy of Walking Ballista. That's a land. That'll be a Ballista. And Barrett does not actually have Mutagenic Gross. That's good news there for Tan. He at least gets to play on. Yeah, I love Tan there not screwing around. Just try to kill that thing if you can. Risk the Mutagenic Growth. Mutagenic Growth is going to be good regardless. Mm -hmm. Now, Barrett does have another threat here in Glistener Elf. And you have to imagine with some amount of protection as well. So here's the Sylvan Scrying for Tan and Grace. He'll search up another Tron piece. Barrett doesn't seem to mind. As Grace will find a Urza's Mine, he'll search that up and it'll probably be his land for the turn. And we'll see if Aaron has something resembling the win here as Tan is going to put the shields completely down with a Chromatic Star. Barrett will draw. That's a land. That's a couple of pump <laughs> spells. He is not wasting any time. Aaron Barrett is going to win game one here over <laughs> Tan <and Grace. laughs> As in effect, very quickly up a game here, Romano Green Tron. Aaron making it look easy. You got to remember, too, this is part of the reason that Aaron not only continues to play this deck, but certainly selected this deck at that Season 1 Invitational earlier this year. He picked this deck because there was a lot of free wins, and coming into that tournament, Ironworks was a big deal, and you remember that. Well, you weren't there. Myself and Todd Anderson covered the finals. Aaron Barich just destroying Zach Elsick. Elsick playing Ironworks against Infect. Yeah, okay. Yep. No, I, I think I, I think Infect's a weirdly underrepresented deck right now. Um, you still have Blighted Agent to cheat a lot of the bad matchups, and the good matchups are just very good. Yeah. Take a look at the sideboards here. We're going to start with Tannen. Now, he does have some cards to sideboard in that do matter. Fourth Thraktos, not so much. Some number of Nature's Claims, I do like. I don't know if it should be the full four, um, but, you know, Ink Moth Nexus is a weakness to this deck. Three Thought Not Seers, two Spatial Contortions, a Graph Trigger's Cage, and an Emrakul, the Promised End. I mean, there's a couple of good ones. I like the Contortions. I like Thought Not Seer in this matchup, and I, I would get in some number of Nature's Claims as well. This deck is just so soft to Nexus. Yeah. I want a little bit of, at least some Nature's Claims. We'll go over to Aaron Barrett, who does not need to change all that much. He's got two Dispels, two Dissenters, Deliverance, two Nature's Claim, two Shaper, Sanctuary, two Spell Skype, a Carrying Call, Dismember, a Distortion Strike, a Graph Trigger's Cage, and a Relic Progenitus. Say it. Say it. Same. There 60. It, there it is. I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind a little bit of Dissenters, Deliverance, but, uh, you know, I, I think you just, just kind of ride with this. Yeah. I don't think he needs to change yeah. very much. Yeah, maybe, maybe you know, the Apostle's Blessing is not great in the matchup. Maybe, cut, you know, cut one of those. I don't know. The Dismember is not that good. So he's got some wiggle room, but he's going to be very close to the same main deck. This is pretty close to easy mode here for Aaron Barrett. She's a competitive Magic player. <laughs> so we're going to over. <laughs> so overtime in Tampa. It's a brown, it's a brown, a brown out. It's a good weekend for you. Another overtime game. A brownout, a brownout in Tampa. It's time Yesterday, for Baker. Still morning in Columbus. Still morning in Columbus, Ohio, after the shellacking the Boilermakers. <laughs> per per doing it? I asked Is that what happened to Ohio State? Did we purdue it? I asked Nick Miller if he could come up with a graphic of a train running over Brutus the Buckeye <laughs> this morning. Someone else out there could do that for me, or it's probably already out there. It might already be A nice there. weekend for you. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad for the Phillips household. Uh, very quickly, we want to sell you some magic cards. StarCityGames.com weekly sale. You can save up to 50% on select full art lands. And I think we should put some trained theme cards on there, too, from magic. The, so maybe the vehicles. The 4-3. Three, what's the 4-3 that gets plus 1, plus 1 and trample when you attack? Uh, that unbeatable. Uh, I know what you're talking from Kaladesh. That unbeatable thing. 
There's Untethered Express. That's a nice train. Yeah. I, well, the 4-3 actually kind of looks like the Purdue Boilermaker logo. Oh, that's true. That's so true. that's yep. the one to do. Oh, Anyhow, up to 50% off select full art lands. Limited time remaining on the sale at go.starcygames.com slash weekly sale. Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's tomorrow. We're going to be updating with a new category. So if you're interested in saving up to 50% off select full art lands, head over to the website. Now you're running out of time. There we go. There we go. Baker, don't let me down. Brown out. We need this. It's we brown. need this. It's a brown out. We need this. Tana Grace is going to be on the play here. But in the meantime, we're going to learn a little bit more about Aaron Barrich because he's likely to be the winner of this match as the 21-year-old from Gulfport, Mississippi, with six open top eights, one open win. Invitational top eight and win earlier this year. He's a streamer. He does some theater and a connoisseur of – I'm going to remove the fine and just put hats. Yeah. Just a connoisseur of hats. Fine is open to interpretation. I don't dislike his hat, but I don't like it It's either. a stylistic choice, for yes, sure. It it's a bold stylistic choice. The hat that was eaten by his apartment for some amount of time. But, fortunately, yes. discovered. Welcome back, hat. He has worn this hat in events for like six years, by the way. Beep, beep. That, that's not the one I want. That's I want an aggr aggressive, want aggressive the, train. I want the 4-3. Renegade Rallier? Ren no, Renegade something. It's Renegade something. Is it Runaway something? No. It's Renegade something. It's unbeatable in that draft format. I think Renegade Rally Isn't Renegade... No, that's... What's the Rallier? Hmm? What was the stupid card that gave you energy and drew a card? Team or energy? Rogue Refiner. Rogue Refiner. Renegade something. They're saying Renegade Rallier on Twitter. I don't know if that's true. Renegade. Freighter, freighter, unbeatable, that, unbeatable. Do that, not pass. Does that does actually kind of look like the Purdue choo -choo. logo a little bit? Because it's got the it's got the little frame on the bottom there, like the Purdue one has with the slots. It's similar. Toot toot. Sorry, Ohio State. Toot toot. So as you know, I grew up in Strongsville, Ohio, which is two hours from Ohio State University. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people ask me if I like Ohio State. Heck no. Yeah. I hate everything about Ohio State. All of it. I hate their stupid colors, their song. I hate all the of it. Ohio State. Yeah, the? You can't just throw that in front of your yeah. university. Get it out of here. Boiler up. We didn't just beat them. Good weekend for me, too. Crushed them. Rutgers nearly won. <laughs> <laughs> On the precipice of winning. It's one step at a time. Yeah, that's not a train. Yeah, that's a different... That's a human warrior. I mean, that's one of the members of the Boilermakers that beat the crap out of Ohio State yesterday, probably. But that is not a train. For Aaron Barrett, he kicked things off with a breeding pool and a noble hierarch. Tannen has a tower to go on with this power plant and a chromatic star. He does have more interaction after sideboard, which is good for him. This is a wooded foothills for Aaron Barrett. And he'll play a spell skite. And Mal, maybe a glistener? was not expecting a spell sky. Though spell sky, good protection against a ton of stuff. Walking ballista, stray disenchants. Correct. And Barrett, again, he has a little bit of wiggle room because uh, he's got a handful of cards in his main deck that don't do really do very much. Even though the spell sky is not great, you can bring it in on spec here because, uh, you know, what, what are you missing out on? A dismember? Who cares? No, not a big deal. No. Now, I think Tannen did peel the Urza's mind to complete the Tron. Now, of course, it depends on what the payoffs are and what his hand looks like, but... That spell yeah, I mean, sky's going to cause some trouble. Yeah, I mean, if your payoff here is uh, Worm Coil Engine, it's actually not shabby here as a blocker. If the payout is Karn, that isn't even necessarily a card here because you can redirect the removal to the spell sky, and then you're just exposed. Two fours plus the Exalted Trigger would be lethal. So uh, good for Tannen, of course, to have Natural Tron here. Um, but any of his big plays here uh, don't guarantee he even survives a turn. Tannen getting the Storm Counters out. He's got some storming to do. Going off. Storm count zero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Still looking to, looking to brew a little bit. Storm count one. Ballista for three. All right. Well, this is not bad. It's okay. But it's no... I mean, if, if, if Barrett moves to combat here, Tans is going to have to block. He's not going to be able to lean... Back on the on the ballista here, since the spell sky covers uh, from a, a attempt to pump if Grace doesn't block. Spell sky is the perfect coverage for Barrett's battlefield right now. Yep. 
No, nature's claim that, and that means Bliss is going to do basically nothing. Six points of damage. Yep. Gonna shoot the Glistener Elf. That's a good good choice, Aaron. Yep. Redirect it to the spell skite. Are we just gonna do that? Yep. Ten. One more time. Yeah, you might as well get your... I mean, the four life doesn't really matter, so I would... All right, whatever. Yeah, I don't think... It, I don't. I get a sense that it's not really going to matter regardless. No, I don't think so. All right. Oh, survived. Okay. I right, still alive. Not not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Better than I was expecting. Six infect. <laughs> we'll head back to Anna's way. That's a good magic card. That's a good card. Oblivion Stone. Being on the play of the draw, it's a world of difference, folks. Yep. Crows and Grip. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the 75. The Crows and Grip blowouts are always great. This will be an attack for two Exalted. All right, well, here's a ground swell to force Tannen to use it. Yeah. And now he's going to rebuild. All right. With the Glistener Elf. So Tannen now needs another thing. Now, I think he actually does have another thing. I think he has an Ugin in hand. Let's see what this is. Chromatic Sphere. Cash it in. One green, one colorless. Actually, just one green. Pardon me. Has to cast it. So just one green floating. Has some concerns about spell pierce, does Grace. Yeah. I mean, you can open up here with World Breaker, which I believe Grace has access to. Yes, he does. But you can get killed even through World Breaker. Ugin is the safer line should it resolve, but there's no guarantee it resolves. And Grace is leaning towards Ugin here. All right. Hill minus, which is definitely the right thing to do, by the yeah. way. Do not plus there. Plus is high. And, and if he plus, Barrage had it all rolled up to yep. kill him. So it is a good thing that Tana elected to minus there on Ugin. Don't want to have to try to target against this deck. Kind of plus. Up to 8 goes Ugin. Barrage is going to fall a little bit lower down. It looks like 5. Barrage might just get burned out by this very powerful dragon. World Breaker's going to come in, exile a breeding pool, and Tron flexing its muscles, folks. Tap out. That's right, as Tan and Grace is going to tie things up here against Aaron Barrich. Tron and Infect going to get ready for a third and final one. You see the sideboards here. Again, for Aaron, I don't think he needs to change all that much. Uh, he's on the play for game three. You just want to make it as streamlined as possible and kill Tan on turn three. Right, and we saw the spell skites. He's got one in the main deck, I believe. Two in the board. Don't know if he brought in the extra copies or whatever. I think the spell is totally fine, again, for redirecting Ballista and or Disenchants. And I don't think you really do all mess around with a whole lot past that. Yep. I think uh, in spots like this, sometimes players have a tendency to maybe over-sideboard. And I think, that, uh, I think that Aaron can keep it just pretty light. Yep. Keep it pretty easy breezy. Don't overthink it too much and be pretty happy with where you're at currently. I think that's what he can do. So we'll see. Obviously, these players uh, will continue to look at things here a little bit. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about the regional championships that's coming up here, folks. Uh, oddly, only just a couple weeks away. You might think it might be further than that. But as you see, our 14 locations, November 10th is not as far away as you may think it is, given that it's actually the 21st of October. I don't know how that happened already. 
moves fast. It does move fast. We're uh, deep into quarter four this year. It's going to be January 1st before you even know it. Go to starcitygames.com slash regionals for more information. We got some more information here for you, though, outside of those 14 locations like prizes here. Our winner, $1,200 at, at each location, pardon me, along with 20 SCG Tour points and invite to our Season 2 Invitational at SCG Winter. Of course, we've got an awesome token here for you guys. Our friendly little goblin that's doing some backpacking. And then we've got an awesome play mat for the specific locations like Atlanta and Baltimore and Boston, Chicago at Pastimes, Columbia at Magelings, Columbus, Comic Town, not far from the horrible <laughs> Ohio State University that lost the. to a bad team. Go to StarCityGames.com slash regionals for more information. Free exclusive play, Matt, and token to the first 200 players at each location. I've just been informed on Twitter that the Browns just intercepted a Jameis Winston. Hmm. Brown out. Brown Woo! out. Brown out. You betcha. I need this. I need this. The Brown left us in the dust. We need every win we can get in every sport. Mm-hmm. Need this. Actually, LeBron, tough start for him. Tough start for him. Can you imagine LeBron throwing punches in a game? Um, I bet those would hurt. Yeah, I can't. I don't even know. Was, I can't recall ever even getting like close to that. No. Yeah. No. It's very calm. It's all right. We still love you, LeBron. But it's Baker, of course. It's Baker City now. Yeah. Barrett's on the play here for G3. And standing grace. Remember, winner of this match can be playing elimination rounds a little bit later today, and then you get to vote. If you want to watch Aaron Barrett play some more magic, if he wins this match, you can do that. Or if Tana Grace does, you can vote for him. Watch some more Tron. In fact, maybe looking to make short work of this topic. You gotta remember too, Aaron Barrett in this building, not this exact room. We've we've done a lot of magic in this Fort Worth Convention Center, but not this exact room. Aaron Barrett has already won an open in this building. Found out about Aaron Barrett about five years ago on the SCG Tour, when he was a lot younger, of course, before he picked up that invitational win and that token, of course. But he's looking for another open win in the Fort Worth Convention Center, and he is one game away from making the elimination rounds, a place he's very familiar with here in Fort Worth. Both players are going to take a look at six cards now. I think Aaron is happy with his opening hand. Tannen is not. So he's going to go down to five, and while Tannen works on that, we want to, of course, talk about the Aaron Barrich token that he got for winning that Season 1 Invitational earlier this year. There he is with his hat in tow, and it looks like maybe the old uh, 504 jersey? Mm -hmm. uh, from his, uh, his friends down there in the New Orleans, Mississippi area, the team he's a part of. Aaron Barrich is a 1-1 soldier on the SCG Tour. A couple ways you can get this token, not this weekend, maybe next weekend, in Charlotte. Well, the easiest way to go get this token is to attend any Open or Classic. You sign up, we give you one of these tokens. And if you can't make it out to one of our events, head over to StarCityGames.com, place an order from the website, $5 or more, and your order will be shipped with one of these tokens. See if Tana can find five cards that he's happy with. He is going to four. Tough way to end the day. Mm -hmm. Tough, they say. Tough matchup. Tough opponent. Not a good matchup. <laughs> tough mulligans. Lost the roll. Yeah. All of it. All of it is tough right now. But can't be too unhappy with the run this weekend for Tan and Grace. And, again, stranger things have happened. This Definitely. Tron deck can win on a mulligan of four. One piece of interaction, all of a sudden you've got Tron on turn three with Karn. This deck can very easily go Tron piece, Tron piece, walking beliefs to kill your thing. Next Tron piece, Karn, take over the game. Spatial contortion in his deck plus board. Absolutely. A lot of Barrage's hands are going to be leaning really heavily on a single card that matters. Tan can answer it. It's not impossible. It is merely improbable. Tan will put the top card to the bottom. Barrage will start. He has a forest and a Glistener Elf. We will go to Tannen Grace, who has a Tron Land and a Chromatic Star. Vines of the Vastwood here for Aaron is the draw. Aaron will play a Might of Old Croja, it appears. Maybe. Is 
He's going to get himself a breeding pool untapped. Excuse me. I'll play Vines. Get in here for four. This leads me to believe that he has mutagenic growth to trump a ballista. I think he has a nexus in his hand and just doesn't care. That's also good. Tannen has spatial contortion. This is what we're talking about, folks. Ooh, Spellskite was one heck of a draw there from Aaron. Wow, wow, wow. Yep. That's the cover he needs wow. to be able to beat a claim or a Karn. Assuming he's got another four points rolled up. Yeah. That was a huge draw. Tannen's going to sacrifice the star. Draw a card. Picked up another copy of Urza's Mine. And there is a Nature's Claim. Does Tannen have a land, maybe? Yep. Okay, okay. He does have another Spatial Contortion in the list. And it's in his hand. Is it really? No way. No. Oh! We, uh, we, oh! we got a game. Oh, Tannen. Oh, Tannen. I mean, if Barrett... Oh, oh, he's the Tron now. We are all the way back. Yes, we are. I don't know if Tannen's got a payoff. As I don't know star. either. Aaron has a Noble Hierarchs, plural. He does not have an Infect Threat. That ain't it. Whoo, boy. Tannen needs a payoff card. He knocks the table, looking for his deck to knock, but he's feeling like he can get back into this one now. I mean, Tannen's position's really good. It's pretty darn good. Big draw step here. Something like a Walking Ballista would be really tough to beat. He's going to slow roll himself a little bit. I can respect it. What is he looking for? Oblivion Stone's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we go over to Barish. Barish is going to attack here for two Infect. He'll play a land past the turn back. Barish's last card in hand is a Nature's Claim. By the way, we counted Tannen out maybe a little bit too early as we head back over to Barish. Barish will draw again. He'll serve for two in, excuse me, two exalted, not infect. Grace will fall down to 16. But in a draw go scenario, Patrick, this is where Tannen Grace wants to be. Oh, he's, I mean, he's drawing to so much more power and has so many more live draws than Barrage. Barrage's deck is filled with a lot of pump spells that aren't good right now. He needs to get an infect creature before the game can even really start. And Tannen can lock him out with a number of draws. An expedition map will net a forest. Now here comes an ancient stirrings. Grace is going to look at the top five cards, probably leave Oblivion Stone open as well. But Tannen is looking to steal this game on a mulligan to Ford. Again, when you were playing Tron, you got to remember this deck mulligans very, very well. Mm -hmm. Does not need a lot of cards to go. If you keep to keep a seven card hand, that's quite the luxury as a Tron player. But it can win on four, or at least can compete on four, as Tannen is doing right now. And he will reveal Karn Liberated. Remember, he's already played a land for the turn. As he searched up the forest, he'll pass the turn back over to Barrich. Barrich going to come in here for two Exalted once again. Grace is going to fall down to 14. He'll play a forest will Barrich, and he'll pass that turn back over to Grace. Grace will draw as a time to deploy Karn is the question. The answer appears to be yes. As he's tapping those three Tron lands to generate seven mana, let the carnage begin as it will go up to ten. And Grace will be exiling a card from Barrich's hand. Now Barrich does have the ability now to kill Oblivion Stone with an Atrius Claim that's in his hand. And he's going to let the Atrius Claim go. Barrich will untap and draw. He's got a copy of Might of Old Croja. He will cast that. He'll play another one. This will be an attack here for enough to kill Karn. Okay. But Tannen still, ton of mana and the Yellowstone is insurance. Now I'm curious if he's supposed to kill Karn there or attack Tannen for a bunch of damage. I don't think he's going to get to attack again if, if it involves... If, if Tannen untaps with Karn and Oblivion Stone, I think we're done dealing damage. You just need Tannen to brick a bunch? Yeah. Okay. Here's another attack with the Noble Hierarch, it looks like, in just a moment. As Barrett will untap, he'll come in here for two more. Grace is going to fall down to ten, using his life total as a resource. That's a Sanctum of Ugin. What's Grace got now as he's tapping a bunch of mana? It'll be for eight. This is an Ugin. Trigger the Sanctum. 
I have to imagine it's Walking Ballista, and it is, because that's yeah. the best card to get against Infect. We're all done here. I think you might be right, partner, as I expect this Ugin to go down to six, and it does. That'll exile the Noble Hierarchs, and the combination of Ugin, Oblivion Stone, and a Walking Ballista on the way, it means that the Baton Rouge native here on the right in Tan and Grace might be moving on to the elimination rounds. And not Aaron Barrage, who got the ideal pairing here in round number 15. Yeah, you cannot ask for more than getting the roll against Drawn and having them go down to four cards game three. <laughs> yeah, and being on the play game three, too. Yeah. It's everything that Aaron could ask for. Second spatial contortion, that was, that was key. Dissenter's Deliverance is going to be here to kill the Oblivion Stone. I think Tannen says that's fine. Can't do much with it anyway. The follow-up here for Barrich will be a Spell Skite. And still search up another land. Nature's Claim will take care of that for Tannen. He'll give Barrich a little bit of life, and Aaron's going to extend the hand. What a comeback for Tannen Grace, who has come up short so many times trying to win a team open. Mulligans to four on the draw in maybe his worst matchup in the format and wins anyway. He's on his way to the top eight. Congratulations to him. Yeah, congratulations. Oof. Yep. Was uh, on the verge of writing him off there, but uh, really nice draw on four cards there. Both of his sideboard spatial contortions was able to get to Tron and uh, Barrage's hand was leaning really heavily on just a couple of infectors when Tannen were, was able to answer them. Not a whole lot left over. Yeah. And eventually got to Tron and started playing his sevens and eights. This is why you play the games. That's why we don't announce winners before the matches begin, because you never know what can happen in a game of Magic. As we get ready here for our next match, uh, Peter Hel Peter Holman, excuse me, is playing. Oh, we saw him earlier. I had to take yep. that back. He was playing Death Shadow with the uh, Gorkland Rampager, mm -hmm. kicking it old school against Peter Tobergen, who is playing Dredge here this weekend. So, uh, Graveyard Hate Check. Got anything there? Um, two Surgical Extractions. Scavenging Ooze. Not a whole lot. You didn't say Leyline line of the Void. No you didn't line. say Leyline of the nope. Void. All right, let's head on down. Let's watch our final match here of the Switch. You got Tobergen on your left, Peter Holman on your right. This match looks to be playing for top eight. Peter Tobergen with the Pepsi hat, 11-3, and three, as is Peter Holman without a hat with his four-color Death Shadow deck. Tobergen going to take a little bit of damage here from a Mana Confluence. And let's see. He's going to be uh, casting Faithless Looting from the Graveyard. He'll dredge three cards. Stinkweed Imp among those cards. Now he'll dredge five cards. We don't have a great look at him right now, but as he places them into the graveyard, I'll be able to let you know what they are. And among them are two copies of Prized Amalgam. So he's drawn two. And now he'll have to discard two, Will Peter. You see the life totals here. It's 11 to 8. And away go two dredgers there in Steakweed Imp and Life from the Loam. Creeping Chill was among those cards. So, Tobergen's going to go up to 14. <laughs> Holman going to fall down to 5. But those Death Shadows have just gotten a bit larger. Interesting stuff. Yeah, it's net neutral from Holman's perspective here. He picks the 3 up on the way back with the Death Shadows. And arguably more than that because he has 2. Yeah. That might be something that Peter Holman's very happy about. That might mean that these Death Shadows could cause a little bit of havoc. So now here come a cop couple copies of Bloodgast. Now those do have haste, but they are staring down some untapped Death Shadows here. And you're going to get some triggers here as well for those uh, prized amalgams, so long as Peter does remember. Though it's a weird trigger in which you basically cannot forget. But for all that Bergen has here, he's a little short on blockers. Yes, he is. Because the blood gas can't block, the amalgam comes back tapped. And now he'll pass the turn back, so Holman will be untapping. Be a good time for maybe that Gore Clan Rampager, folks, as he will draw a card. Didn't get a great look at it. I think I see an Inquisition of Kozlek in hand right now, though. And he might have a Traverse the Uvenwald. I have to imagine Delirium is here. And right now, 13 minus 5, that means those Death Shadows are 8 8s? There is the Gore Clan Rampager, the one of in his deck to search for. He's happy to attack with all of his creatures. Tobergen only has two blockers, and Gore Clan Rampager will give plus four, plus four. So he's going to Rampager there over the Narc Amoeba. 
Thir it's a ton. This is a ton. That is a ton of damage. And the Gore Clan Rampager that Peter Holman put in his deck was able to tutor for via Traverse the Uvenwald. And wow, timely, timely card. Going to win his game and match. Friends are jumping in the back a little bit here. And for your four-color Death Shadow player,